Hey everybody, thank you for dropping into DeFi Divi. My name is Matthew, welcome, glad you're here. Today we're gonna to talk about XRP. I'm getting, uh, I always get not only good responses from my um, XRP content, whether I tweet about it on Twitter or I make a video. I started with XRP and people like that type of content and I thought, you know what, it's time for an XRP video. Now, in this video, it's gonna be purely data-driven. So we're gonna go over some negative data, some positive data. I'm gonna start low and end it on a high note. And the high note does show what I believe would be a good price prediction, uh, realistic, but also very good. Uh, full disclosure, I took profits on my XRP a couple months ago. I realized after rolling those profits plus that cost basis into another token, at that time, a couple tokens, just bigger, faster horses. I was getting those tokens a lot cheaper than their spot price. So I did that because I wanted to play this run a little differently. So XRP and I are temporarily separated, but we're not divorced. I'll be back. I like XRP and I like the XRP community. Uh, there are some really smart people there and, um, you know, I'll always have a place for it. I'm always going to look back at the data and come back to this probably in the next bear market, or at least after some things have been completed. But that said, there's still potential for this thing to probably outperform what I switched over to uh, if there certain things happen. And so we'll talk about those. And it's kind of exciting. I'm excited. Whenever I see XRP moving up, I tweet out about it because I'm excited for the XRP community. I would say that is the toughest community out there, hands down, been through so much. And now this thing has legal clarity. So there's a lot that could happen this bull run. And we'll look at some price possibilities at the end in relation to uh, where I believe the entire market cap of the space is going. So that said, let's start with the negative. Now, I've been seeing a lot of tweets out on Twitter, uh, people telling XRP holders to switch to Telcoin. I kind of laughed when I saw that, and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna do some numbers, because I don't think that's probably a good idea. And even those numbers didn't come out as good as I expected them to, but I still wouldn't switch from <laughs> XRP to Telcoin. Not that Telcoin might not blow it away in terms of price, but we'll talk about, I'll talk about why I wouldn't do that. We'll just look at some, some ratios. So one of the ratios I really like, basically, since I started getting into fundamentals and just diving deep into deeper into on-chain and, and how, you know, companies might, uh, companies, I should say, uh, financial institutions might assess crypto now that Wall Street's in here, they're going to be looking at things differently. And so what people are doing, like I, I'm on Real Vision, so I see people over there doing it and uh, other financial analysts is they're taking metrics from the traditional stock market, like price to earnings and things like that. And they're moving them over to on-chain metrics. And one of them I've seen by a few uh, influencers I really like who focus only on data, as well as a couple analysts over at Real Vision. I've seen this metric and I like it a lot. And it's called uh, your network valuation to daily active user ratio. And basically it's the market cap uh, divided by the number of daily active users. And with this ratio, the lower is better, uh, which is not completely, totally intuitive. You have to think about it for a second, but yeah, or at least I had to, but yeah, basically if you take the total market cap, let's say you have a million dollar hypothetical market cap, but it's only two users using it back and forth. Well, each user's adding $500,000 worth of market cap value just by using it. Sounds pretty high, right? Meaning it's very, very volatile. So you, you want a super low number, ideally a much lower number than the baseline. So right now, uh, based on some reports I've seen out there, it's pr a rough baseline estimate of all layer two smart contract tokens, smart contract blockchains, the total market cap of all those combined, divided by the total daily active users on all those combined, comes out to roughly about 95,000 per user, somewhere in that vicinity, that's a rough number. And now when you look at the numbers of some, uh, some of these chains, it's pretty interesting. So Solana, we have a market cap of 72 billion, going on 73 billion, and that has 710,000 daily active users because there's a lot of DeFi happening, there's a lot of meme coins happening, there's a lot of NFTs happening. 
there's just a lot happening there. The thing crashes still occasionally, not as badly as it did last bull run, but we just had a crash, what, in February? Still goes down. People don't care because there's a lot of activity on here. And this metric is good. It's a lot of daily active users. People see that. And when you divide the total market cap by the number of daily active users, you get a, a uh, single daily active user is adding about $102,000 worth of value to this total valuation or this total market cap. And the baseline is 95. So it's pretty close, right? That's a good number. That's a healthy ecosystem. Now, <clears throat> when I think about this compared to like social networks, this is obviously very low. This number, right, should be a lot smaller still, and it'll get there for all for all blockchains that succeed in the long run. But, you know, Solana, Bitcoin, Ethereum have interesting numbers when you look up here. So let's look at the next one. The next one I did was HBAR. I thought this was an interesting one because it has the similar amount of active users to XRP. Daily active users, I should say. You can get these numbers various places. By the way, I got uh, XRPs on XRP scan. Or is it XRP scan? XRP, yeah, XRP scan. So you can get it here. So this is like a rough estimate of around 20,000. You can also get it on Santiment. So here I have XRP and Telcoin. And they're similar to what's on the XRP ledger, you know, around 20,000. Whereas over here, Telcoins was ridiculously low. It's only showing a couple active users per day, per day. So I went and dug deeper over onto Etherscan and was able to pull up the number of unique token transfers so per day. So basically a unique receiver and a unique sender. And those combined, I'm averaging them out to about 500 a day. Very small, right? Telcoin. Going up right now in price with like maybe 500 people a day using it. And this thing's been around a while. So keep that in mind. Be careful with that one. But back to this, you're looking at HBAR with about 23,000 active users and a market cap of 4 billion, about 4.1 billion. That adds a, uh, a net NVUR or net value, network value to user ratio of 179,000. So not too far away from Solana. Actually looks pretty healthy. I think that's the, you know what, if I was thinking about switching into something and I didn't, you know, a lot of people don't like the Solana. I should say a lot of people on the XRP side of town feel more comfortable with the H bars and the XDCs and the and those types of tokens versus going over to the Solana avalanche world. <clears throat> I don't know why. I don't know why that is. It's just funny how that all lit played out in crypto. Uh, I recommend going, traveling all over the crypto world and learning from everybody. So, uh, but interesting number here. You know, you have 20,000 users with XRP, daily active average, and an average about 23,000 on HBAR. The HBAR's uh, daily active user Network value to user ratio is, is pretty reasonable. It's not too far from the baseline, a little over double, close to double, I should say. Solana's lower. Now, that's not bad because when you get to Telcoin now, the, the market cap of Telcoin is 435 million, and about 300 daily active users. That means one single user is bringing 1.4 million of value to this total valuation. That sounds a little high, right? I mean, just for me going ahead and transferring money, to someone makes my, my every day or using it, buying something, receiving money, selling, buying, transacting. That just makes my value to the entire network worth $1.4 million. It sounds a little uh, ripe for easy manipulation, easy whale dumping and easy spiking. XRP. Now, I was kind of sad to see that it was this high. I thought it would be lower. You do have, but we do have that crazy market cap, right? XRP has a market cap of 36 billion, but still only about 20,000 active users. Now, that's going to change, I believe, soon. So don't be too upset. But right now, on this ratio, it's even worse than Telcoin. It's at 1.8 million value that one single user brings to this market cap. Sounds kind of crazy, right? So in terms of network effects, XRP is ranking the lowest in relation to its valuation, its market valuation. Not so great there. 
Now, people are saying on Twitter, like I said, hey, you should switch from uh, XRP to Telcoin because Telcoin's moving. Well, first, chasing green candles is always a bad idea. Second, even though this is, might be slightly better on this NVUR ratio, you really want to switch to a network that only has 300 active users. It's been around for quite a long time. Now, if this number is wrong, you know, go ahead and please point me into the accurate data. But I'm looking on Etherscan and I'm looking on Santiment. The Santiment's pretty close when it comes to XRPs and it's close when it comes to Solanas and others. So I'm not sure why it would be off on Tel. But uh, yeah, that's a very low amount of users, 300 a day. I mean, if you were investing in an online dating site or a social network or online dating app, would you invest in the app that had 300 users or the one that had, well, 710,000 active users? Obviously, network effects play a role in valuation. So this seems overvalued. And yeah, by this metric alone, XRP seems overvalued. But let's get on to some better news. Let's get on to some good news. We're going to start, like I said, I'm going to end this on a high note. So Great news for the XRP community. The XRP Ledger Automated Market Maker was approved. It sounds like it's coming out very soon. And the good news about the XRPL Automated Market Maker is that this is going to, in theory, bump this number of daily active users way up. Because you know what? A lot of these people, they just need something to do. People need something to do over here, you know, because there's nothing. All these other projects, even Telcoin, have DeFi in place. And so DeFi is finally coming to XRP directly. You will also be able to do DeFi on XRP through the Flare Network. So, you know, you'll have a choice there. But the fact that it's coming to the XRP ledger uh, with the automated market maker, you can deploy capital, you can deploy your XRP and other stable coins and other coins into liquidity pools, earn yield, provide people the value of the option to be able to exchange outside of a centralized exchange, and you can earn yield for providing that service. Now you have to research it. One of the challenges I do see here is that I believe, and I could be wrong, this is just an assumption, but my assumption is that there's a good percentage of the XRP community that are primarily just from HODL culture, you know, just hold. And I like to hold too. I hold as well, but I, I do put a small percent into DeFi. So don't be some education here, learning about things like in permanent loss. Those are painful to learn about when you just go in there and you put money into a pool and you're like, wait a minute, I don't get it. My XRP, XRP went up, but the value in my pool went down. You start to have to kind of look at things and educate yourself on how a liquidity pool is a separate asset versus the XRP token in and of itself and the other token in and of yourself. When you put it into pool, just consider that a whole new asset. And it could perform worse than just holding the tokens. The point is this will attract, it should attract in theory more people into uh, more active users, I should say, into the onto the XRP ledger. And then when people, investors, institutions look at that, they're going to see, oh, yeah, there's a good active user base here, like on perhaps, you know, Bitcoin or uh, Matic. Matic's one of the biggest. You can see some of these on Token Terminal as well. You got BNB chain crushing it. I always wondered why, you know, I used to not research this stuff so much. I was like, why is BNB up there? Because there's over a million, 1.5 million people using it every single day, this token, for all kinds of stuff. So it's not going anywhere. It's staying up in the top four, top five. <clears throat> Polygon, another one. It's doing really well with daily active users. Tron is funny because it is. I just don't think the price is doing that well for other reasons, possibly centralization issues. It's going to take more than just daily active users to want to you know, invest in these things, but it's definitely one key metric, one KPI, if you will, that I certainly look at now and, and I see financial analysts who worked for institutions using these types of metrics. But that is good news. Uh, the AMM is good news. Now, another thing, another piece of good news for XRP, the sentiment is horrible right now. People are like, ah, just go to Telcoin or, um, you know, just uh, sell it, get rid of it. It's really bad. And so people who might even hate XRP, and we see this all the time, traders, professional traders, who might not even like the thing. They're going to look at that and they're going to be like, you know what? Everybody hates this thing. It cannot go lower. It only has one route, one way to go, and that is up. And we are in a bull run. So that's what they're going to think. And so people are going to pile in. So just because of that low sentiment in a bull run, 
It's gonna have a, it's gonna have some sort of moment no matter what. And then the other thing, of course, is Ripple. They're still moving forward on their businesses, and those businesses, you know, that use case, that primary old school XRP ledger use case, that comes into fruition with regulation. I mean, then it is really a lot of uh, daily active users who don't even know they're using it, at least potentially, I would think so. And Telcoin has that potential too. Uh, there, the, what I like about Telcoin and XRP, even though I don't have either right now, is that they do have a potential for daily active users who don't even know they're using it. Actually, same with HBAR. Solana, I think most people know they're using Solana. They're just here having fun, doing DeFi, buying meme coins, buying NFTs, and interacting with the blockchain. There's a mobile phone coming out on this thing as well. Solana's crazy. It is, one of, it is probably the biggest, fastest altcoin horse. Uh, so if you're looking for... A quick, I don't know, at this point, maybe, maybe 5x. That could be something to consider, and that's a maybe. There's no guarantee, of course. Crypto's crazy because it's already ran pretty far. But, uh, you know, XRP has not. And so let's get into price. What's possible with this thing? So I created this thing. It's just a sheet a while ago that basically compares what's possible based on previous bull runs with the total market cap and the percentage that of market cap that each cryptocurrency had at the peak of the bull run. So we can go back to 2013. So we can go back to 2013 to start and we can see that the total market cap at the end of the bull run was around 13 uh, billion and Bitcoin had 87% of it. Litecoin had 6% and XRP had 3.5%. How old XRP is. Pretty cool, huh? You go to the 2017 bull run, total market cap topped out at around, at the end of the bull, topped out at around 535 billion. Bitcoin had about 60% of it. Uh, Ethereum had 12% of it. So these two combined had 72% of the total market cap. In the first bull run, the top two had 90% of the total market cap. So you can see Bitcoin and Ethereum did pretty well. Now XRP had one of its it was the best performing token in 27 in that in this bull run. It just happened a little bit later, and I think it went it went from crazy amounts like 0 .0, 0 0.2 cents to three dollars, just the the highest gains ever. And at the end of it all, it had five percent of the total market cap at a price of around somewhere in the three dollar range. It's pretty crazy, pretty crazy stuff. Now last bull run 2021. XRP got cut short of the lawsuit. Still did pretty well. I know it hit $2 sometime a while before the peak of the bull run. Then the lawsuit, that was actually after the lawsuit was in place, the uh, SEC versus Ripple. But, you know, it still had 2% of the total market cap. I believe this was around $1.17. You can see this on historical data on Coinbase. Yeah, $1.17 here in, uh, I put this, the date of to November 15th, 2021. Bitcoin was 63,000. It might be off like a day there, but not too bad. But let's say now, but now we're in this bull run, right? And so XRP has legal clarity. It's not going to have that issue happening for it, but it it's also not going to have the same narrative uh, that was rocking back in 2013, which is, well, Bitcoin and Litecoin are proof of work. They're just super slow. We need a better blockchain for payments, something that's fast. That was a great narrative in 2013. Not really that unique now. Now, 2017, the narrative was super hot that this thing was going to disrupt SWIFT. It was happening and people were jumping on it, even though this, this smart contract narrative was also starting to blow up. So <clears throat> there's a lot of cool stuff going on there. 2021 narrative got cut short. The narrative was primarily just, you know what? There's a lawsuit against this thing. Uh, I'm out. And uh, a lot of people just went on and chased bigger, faster horses. And they did pretty well as a result. Now, this bull run, we have some, we have some tricky stuff. We have legal clarity, totally amazing for XRP. Uh, but it also does have some pivoting happening, right? So there's the narrative that, okay, the payments thing didn't work out as fast as, as, as we thought it would. Still in play, but just didn't take, it's taking more time due to a bunch of factors. Makes sense. Financial institutions move at a snail's pace. So, you know, if you were starting a business as an entrepreneur uh, and you had two choices, do you want to sell uh, pet food on Amazon or do you want to get into uh, taking, uh, do you want to open a bank, 
right? One of them is going to be a lot easier as a business to run because you have much less regulation. So this is the thing with XRP's primary uh, old school use cases. It's in a high regulation spot, whereas stuff like crypto gaming, still some regulation there, but not nearly as much. But now we also have the automated market maker. So that is coming and that will help contribute to the narrative. Okay, so this bull run, I'm making a big assumption that we're going to hit $10 trillion dollars this bull run with Bitcoin and Ethereum composing 70% of it, roughly again, just like it did in 2017, just like it did in 2021. Uh, and similar to not too different than 2013 as well, Bitcoin had 87% of it. So market cap of 10 billion, I could see Bitcoin hitting 250. Some people don't think so. That's a totally different video. I can see Ethereum hitting 18, but you could play with these numbers either way. I think still these two are going to have 70% of it all. And I think Solana and BNB will be up here. Actually, I do think BNB will probably be above Solana. It just has more daily active users happening. And But I, I, I part of me was thinking Solana could flip it, but whatever. It's going to be one of these two in the number, four, number three spot. So it'll be Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, or BNB. <coughs> and number three... Avalanche, I think, could move up there because of the gaming narrative, and it's getting a lot of, a lot of uh, buzz right now. And then Chainlink, I think, should be up there, but it's funny. That thing hasn't really done too much in, in, in terms of crypto. It's done all right, but in the crypto world, it's kind of like XRP. It hasn't really moved too much, not like it should have. But so with XRP, it, assuming a circulation of around $55 billion, uh, putting a price at about $9, that does give us a similar market cap percentage of the total market cap for XRP that it had in previous bull runs. You know, it had more than that in 2017, but it also had the SWIFT narrative was much hotter. Uh, so we'll see if that comes back. And if that comes back, that could pump it up. Now, XRP spikes too, so it could easily go much higher than nine. Nine feels safe uh, in a few, in, at, what, 60 cents right now. So you're still well over a 10x and a lot of cryptocurrency has 10x already so i think this could easily happen now xrp likes to when it pumps last it does like to do crazy stuff so it could wick like a one day wick way higher than this could go up to 18 dollars. could go up to 21 dollars. the thing is will you be able to time that perfectly probably not but you could probably average out around nine or ten, eleven dollars safely if this thing does capture its usual percentage of the total market cap and assuming that the total valuation of the cryptocurrency market will hit 10 trillion in this cycle. I think it's possible. What do you think, everybody? Let me know your thoughts. I think this thing could go to nine, ten, eleven, twelve dollars. It'll be quick because it happens quickly, so you gotta be ready to get out. Uh, I'm excited. I will be rooting for all of you all. I'll be missing it this time because I did, like I said, take profits and move over into some just, you know, I, I like XRP, but I'm looking forward to a day where maybe it kind of hopefully charts differently. Like with uh, Solana and other ch Avalanche, those things kind of give me like feedback as the bull market runs. Like, oh, yeah, we're moving up a bit. We're moving up a bit. Whereas XRP is kind of like a straight line and then a huge spike, and which that's just frustrating for me. I know some of you love that. Some of you are like, you know, you just got to hold it, man. XRP pumps hardest and it pumps last. And I, res I respect that. I'm just not built for that right now. But I think that the trading type of patterns are going to change on XRP in the future. And I'm going to be watching it, probably buy back in. Uh, next bear market. So I'll be, uh, and I'll keep it, I'll, I'll keep, and I'm going to keep creating content in any ways because nothing here on this channel but objective data. All right, everyone, I hope this video finds you well. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.